Hi, Earth Day friends. I hope you're enjoying your week and um, all the learning that we're doing about Earth and helping it and all that stuff. So I have two books and an experiment. So Our Earth and Air is All Around Us. And then we're gonna do a science experiment. I can't wait. So I wanna talk about, today we're gonna to talk about air pollution and just kind of like the importance of air in general. We've talked about land pollution kind of all the time, like pick up your junk, right? You're not just gonna walk down the street and throw your trash on the ground because then you'd be a litter bug. Do you know what a litter bug is? It's someone that literally is throwing trash on the ground, which is, I can't even. So this is a true story. Okay, 1993, going to a park. I am riding in a car and the car in front of us, we're like in a park, in a real park, like with swings and like slides and nature trails. We are driving behind this car and they throw out the window an entire bag of McDonald's trash. It's as if they went to McDonald's, honey, in the middle of the story, they went to McDonald's, got all the stuff to go, Big Mac, Coke, I don't know. Put it all in the bag, because it was like big and puffy. And then as they're driving along, they roll down the window, because oh, wow. this is what our window said, you had to go like this. Roll down the window, and they just threw it out of the window onto the ground at the park. I was devastated, and so was my friend. We didn't even know what to do. So we honked our horn, because that felt like it would be helpful, and it wasn't. They just sped away. But I have never forgotten that, and that was a thousand years ago. And it still bothers me to this day, like who would do that? But people do. So part of land pollution is just people making bad choices like that. And then the other part of land pollution is what we do with our trash. And if we don't recycle and we don't reuse, we have too much trash that goes to the land and it just gets in a big pile of bleh. So that's a problem. We also talked a little bit about water pollution when we read our um, Pout Pout Fish book and how they came together to clean up all the, the pollution, all the trash that was in the ocean. And that is part of our responsibility as well. And then today we're gonna to talk about air and the importance of air and how it needs to be clean <coughs> because we breathe it and the plants and all that stuff needs it too. So we're gonna read two books and do an experiment. <coughs> and here we go. Honey might need to come say hi. Our Earth by Anne Rockwell. Our Earth is where I live. It is a big round globe. Raise your hand if you live on Earth. It has a frozen North Pole at the top and an icy cold South Pole at the bottom. Our Earth was shaped by water, fire, ice, and living things. It's always changing, much too slowly for us to see. So God created the Earth and the oceans and the sky. But what happens over time is the rain and the waves start to erode the, the land. So the land starts to take a different shape. And as the climate changes, different things happen to the land as well. The biggest piece of land on earth they are continents. Their shorelines meet the sea. So this is nor the north, oh. Oh, the North American continent. Sorry, I thought we were breaking it apart. We're not. Okay, islands are smaller pieces of land that rise up out of the sea. So I think you know the islands, they are surrounded by water. Some islands are born when volcanoes erupt below the sea and hot lava cools and over time it turns to soil where green things can grow. Some islands are coral reefs that grow and grow until they poke above the water and the birds bring seeds to them. Water gushing up from the ground in rain and melted snow fill the streams, ponds, and lakes. Streams flow into small rivers which flow into bigger ones. 
So you got tiny streams that go into bigger streams and bigger rivers into bigger rivers and then finally out to the sea or the ocean. Nothing can stop water from finding its way. Some rivers dry up and stop flowing, but some empty into the salty sea. The land on our earth has rounded hills that enclose green valleys. There are many forests on our earth. Rainforests are full of flowers and birds and monkeys jumping through the green leafed trees. Look at all that beautiful goodness. There are hot sandy deserts where lizards live and prickly cacti grow. And there are dark damp caves that go far down into the earth. And that's where the bats live. Eek! There are tall canyons carved by years and years of rushing water. And there are high snow-capped mountains reaching up to the clouds in the sky. Our big round earth is very beautiful and it's my home and it's your home. And the end, which means we need to take care of this earth that's my home and your home and all the animals. Okay, our second book is The Air All Around You by Franklin M. Branley and it's illustrated by Holly Keller. And this is what we're gonna use our little experiment we're gonna do an experiment out of this book, so pay attention. Air is all around you. There's air in a deep valley. There's air in a high mountain. Wherever you go, there is air. Cars and houses are filled with it. So are barns, sheds, dog houses, and bird houses. Cups are full of it. So are bowls, pots, and glasses that we drink out of. That's hard to believe because you can't see the air or smell it. You can't even feel it either, except when it's moving or when you spin around. So when is air moving? When it's windy, right? You can't see air in a glass, but you can prove it's there. Try this experiment. Run a lot of water in the sink or put water in a big bowl. Color the water with a little bit of food coloring. Not much, just enough to color it a little bit. I think that's so that we can see it. Stuff a paper napkin into the bottom of a glass. Turn the glass upside down. If the napkin falls out, stuff it in tighter. Keep the glass upside down. Make sure it's straight up and down. Do not tip it. Push it all the way under the water or as far under as you can. Lift the glass out of the water. Turn it right side up and take the paper napkin out of it. It is dry. The water didn't touch it. The paper was under the water, but it did not get wet. Let's see why. It says dry. Very interesting. Once again, put the napkin in the glass. Turn the glass upside down and push it under the water. Look at the glass through the water. The water does not go into it. It can't go in because there is air in the glass but you can make the water go in. Tip the glass a little bit. A bubble of air goes out and up. See that little bubble? I wonder what's gonna happen if you let the air out of that cup by tipping it. When the air goes out, there is empty space in the glass and the water goes in. You can see it. The coloring you added to the water 
helps you see it. Bubbles go out and water goes in. So when he tilted it sideways, air went out, blah, 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 with those bubbles, and the water, whoop, gets a sneak in right there. Now, keep tipping the glass until all the air goes out. Now it is full of water and the napkin soaking wet. When the glass was full of air, there was no room for water. When the air went out, the water went in. Air is all around you, and it's all around the earth. Air covers the earth like a peel covers an orange. This is air all around the earth. The air weighs a lot, five quadrillion tons. That's five quadrillion tons. That is hard to believe, but it is true. Wow, who knew that air was so heavy? The air in the room where you are weighs more than you think. In an average room, the air weighs 75 pounds or so. 75 pounds! If the room is big, the air in it weighs more. If it's small, the air weighs less. We don't feel it because the air is spread all around us. 75 pounds. Ask mom and dad how much you weigh. And the air in the room, on average, is going to weigh more than you do. That's crazy. Airplanes and balloons fly in the air, but spaceships don't. Rockets push them higher into the air. Spaceships fly above the air that is all around the earth. And that's why it starts to float away and there's no gravity out there. Spaceships must take air with them. They have enough to keep the astronauts alive. When they go out of the ship, astronauts carry tanks of air on their backs. They need air to stay alive and so do you and I. Lucky for us, air is everywhere. Everywhere we go on earth, there is air. Air is even in the water. That's lucky for fish. The air is dissolved in the water. You can't see the air, but you can prove that it's in there. Look at that cat checking out those fish. Fill a glass with water and set the glass aside and leave it for one hour. After an hour, you will see little bubbles on the inside of the glass. They are tiny bubbles of air. The air came out of the water. You can see that picture. Little tiny things, of, little bubbles of air. Fish use air that is dissolved in water. They have gills that help them do this. Air keeps them alive. We can't breathe, breathe air that is, is dissolved in water. So when we stay underwater for a long time, we have to take air with us. So you either hold your breath and go underwater or divers take air in tanks and they strap them to their back. That scuba diver, she's got an air tank on. Air keeps us alive. Wherever we go on earth, north, south, east or west, high on a mountain or deep in a valley, there is air. Air is all around us. All right, so it sounds like air is pretty important. We're gonna need it, and we're gonna need it to be clean. If we're breathing in yucky, polluted air, dirty air, that's not gonna be good for my lungs. It's not gonna be good for your lungs. We need our bodies to work well so that we can think and jump and skip and dance and play t-ball. And for our bodies to work well, we need clean air, right? Clean air and clean water and a clean earth. So see how this is all coming together? So I'm going to do this experiment and put some paper towel in a cup and see what happens. We'll tip it upside down. And so I'm gonna do it, maybe you can do it too. All right. Hi guys, I'm here with our experiment. I have a bowl of water. I have a clear glass. 
some paper towels, and I don't have food coloring, so I'm going to use Diet Crayon Mango. So I'm gonna add a little coloring to my water, and I think that's just so you guys can see it. You can see my color now? Oh, except my shirt is also red. Let me get a little more red. Okie doke. So take a um, paper towel, smoosh it up, and stick it in the bottom of your glass cup. And it's glass so that we can see through it. I guess it doesn't have to be glass or see-through. But I shoved it down there so it won't come out. And now I'm going to put my cup exactly straight over the water and push down. I don't want to tilt it. Remember in the story it was saying that the air is going to get trapped in here and not allow the liquid to go up into it. So let's see. Straight down. Ooh, about to... Can you see that? Here, I'll push it towards you. All right, I'm gonna pull it out and see if our paper towel got wet. There we go. Hmm. Ooh, it's totally dry, you guys. Let me get it. Perfectly dry. It worked. If we did not tilt it, the air got trapped up into this area and did not let the water in, did not let the liquid. So now I'm gonna try again, shove it back down in there so it won't fall out. All right, and this time I'm going to put it straight in again so the liquid does not get into my um, paper towel, but watch, watch what happens now. Here, I'm gonna release some air. So as air is being released out of that space, water is seeping in. Oh my goodness. The more I tilt it, you can see the water, can't you? Can you see the water now rising inside my cup? I can. Oh my goodness, I'm making a mess. I just let about all, that was a lot of air. Now, I can tell there is water all inside my cup, which means our paper towel is probably getting wet. All right, you ready? Let's see. Ooh. Oh, man. Totally wet. Wow. You see that? There you have it, kids. If you tilt your cup and you let the air bubbles out, then it gives room for the water to seep in. It worked. So maybe you can ask mom and dad if you can try to do this experiment. And that was just a fun water air experiment, a little science project that we could do together. But the moral of the story is how important air is to you and to me and to all living things and that we need to keep it clean. And I want you to ask mom and dad and see if you guys can investigate, how does the air get dirty? We know land gets dirty if people are litter bugs and they throw stuff on the ground. Don't get me started. And we understand about how we can make the water polluted as well. Because we can put yucky stuff that doesn't belong in the water, like dirty oil or gas or um, plastic stuff that gets thrown away that gets um, ends up in the rivers and the oceans. And so the water and the land is a little bit easier to understand than the air. And that gets polluted by when we have factories. And sometimes if you're on a road trip and you look out your window and you see factories and you see all that smoke coming out of the stacks or maybe exhaust that comes out of a car, that gets in the air and then it gets in our lungs. So happy Earth Day. I hope you do the experiment. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, be thinking of all the ways we can save our planet. All right, love you, bye.